Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Ardmore Masterclass. My name is Paul James, I'm the Account Strategy Director here at Ardmore. And today I'm joined by Paul Bowen, who is our Group Creative Director. Hi Paul. Hello. So Paul has been the a Creative Director here at Ardmore for about five years and Group Creative Director uh, for the last two years. Um, and been in advertising and, and design for, for probably many more years than you wish to admit, Thank Paul. You. Um, and today we're, we're, we're running a little, little masterclass, a little presentation on really looking at three campaigns that uh, one of which has inspired Paul, so creative inspiration, inspired him to get into the world of creative advertising. One which is a little bit more current um, and has affirmed why you got into it, uh, Paul. And the final one in terms of contribution is a campaign that you've recently done or you recently contributed to here at Ardmore and um, that you're that you're proud of and, and would like to share some insights on and um, the final goal of, of the presentation today really is to share three things three important things that you think uh, marketing and brand managers should be looking for when evaluating their creative concepts particularly ahead of developing or at least ahead of, of launching uh, new campaigns so, so that sort of sums up what we're gonna uh, what we're gonna talk uh, about today. So, Paul, if we could maybe just start with with um, just even before we get into that first campaign, if you want to tell us a little bit about how you got started in advertising design and and then get into get into that campaign that, that sort of inspired you to get going. Well, um, usual routes, you know, new new was interested in art and so forth, and um, but you, you you go and design courses initially. Um, and, and it wasn't until I was asked to look at uh, a project uh, for a campaign that, 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 that ins- inspired me personally in, in what I was doing um, that I started to realise there was more to it. And, and to be fair, the one I'm about to talk about here, um, it's a largely art direction based um, campaign and it was, a, it, was, it was all print as well. Um, and I suppose that was where my passion was at the time, but I started to see that the effectiveness of what the communication was saying as well as how it was said was, was really important as well. So um, the first piece of work, and it was a project that I was asked to do by, um, by my old lecturer, who was an ex-ad man as well, um, was, uh, as I say, uh, a campaign that was largely press-based, and it, and it was um, Absolute Vodka. So um, Absolute Vodka is the longest running ad campaign ever. It started in 1988, created by, uh, 1980, uh, created by TVWA, and there's over 15,000, 1,500, sorry, individual treatments of this thing. Um, it's, uh, it started out life, um, basically the brief initially was, was about purity, and therefore they came up with um, absolute perfection. Or actually what they, what, what they started out with was um, absolute, it's the perfect vodka. And the guy, uh, the, the creative, took it back into work the next day. I can't remember his name now. Um, took it back into work the next day and his copywriter said to him, actually, what about just absolute perfection? And that started a trend as well for over 15 years. So it was always a two-word headline. The first word was always absolute, which you could e- easily um, uh, be replaced with just perfect. Um, uh, or sorry, pure, so it's pure perfection, pure Amsterdam, pure Brooklyn as you, as, you, as you go through all these. And then the second word was a descriptor about either the product or um, the location or the person drinking it. So that kind of um, purity of message, it was all about vision. Um, I, it I, it re- really appealed to me. Um, and, and I suppose looking back, the big thing about it is that it was all press and... Um, it was, it was inducted into the American Marketing Association Marketing Hall of Fame um, at some point in the night, is, um, along with Coca-Cola and Nike. And both Coca-Cola and Nike had massive, massive um, media platforms to work on. And, and, and this was up there with them and still, still rings true for, for me. Um, and as you, go to, as, you start to look, um, as you start to look at um, you know, how they developed it, there's, there's, a few thing, there's a few things about it. One is um, the flexibility of it. Whenever we work on a campaign, we're always challenged with something that's flexibility. It's going to have longevity and it's going to keep, it's going to keep being relevant. Um, and the flexibility, it, it, you know, they used it to, to, to define cities. They used it to define um, art, fashion. Um, it, it, it just went on and on and on. And, and you know, I, I, I just I felt that there was something really smart, smart in that as well. 
But the other thing that was great about it was that it was relevant and it meant things to individuals. So when you look at New York here, you look at London, you look at Budapest, you know, the, the simple things that you look at, but it's, they're symbols of, of, of those cities. Um, and also, you know, um, it's, it's engaging as well. And by that, I mean, um, it's rewarding. You know, you, sometimes you do have to look a little bit harder. And when, when, a, when, a, when a viewer has to do that and they're rewarded with what they see, I think it's a really powerful and memorable, um, a memorable um, uh, event as well. So, and then finally, um, just skipped ahead there. Finally, one of the things that I love uh, is when campaigns become, um, they, they, they become mimicked and they take on a life of their own and they, they leave uh, they leave the rooms of the advertising agency and the brand themselves to uh, to be defined by students and the like and you get things like this absolute drunk so all in all i suppose the simplicity and purity of the campaign is is something if, i mean if we can still create two two word headlines then then you you're you're onto a winner there but um you know i think the thing about it overall is that it's not necessary, it doesn't ever mention taste. I know it suggests purity, but it never mentions taste. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to hang on that puke on there. Um, it, never, it never mentions taste. They just, they, 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 they talk about, it's about good taste, I suppose. Um, and that for me, ta- you know, t- taught me an awful lot that, you know, um, it doesn't just have to look beautiful, it can say something beautiful as well. So the, sec- the second piece of work, which I skipped ahead to there, that kind of still affirms why I wake up every day and I'm still inspired to do this stuff um, was Burger King. Um, and a couple of years ago, I had the joy of um, meeting this fella here. Um, his name was Fernando Machado. Uh, he's chief marketing officer for, um, for uh, Burger King. <clears throat> he's got a range of agencies all across the world, but um, the work that I'm going to talk about here was done by um, D- David Miami and I think there's some from BBH in UK as well. Um, he was a bit of a whirlwind when he started in Burger King. Um, he's ex Dove, so he was the person behind Real Beauty, um, and um, as as he says here, be afraid, be very afraid, but do it. Um, he's the perfect client. He just wants to be challenged all the time, and um, he said, uh, challenge yourself. Write one line briefs. It will haunt the creative guys forever, and I really like that. But some some of the work that he did. Um, what I admire, I suppose, is the earned media that that he gets. Um, from the campaigns that he runs. So this was one that they ran, which was um, the Proud Whopper, and it was to celebrate um, Pride in San Francisco, and they filmed reactions of people, be they supporting it or be they completely against it. And, um, and, and that, that, that went viral, obviously. Um, the second one, and this is the one that, um, this is the one that I absolutely adore, and just, just got me really excited. See if we can just play this here. You're watching a 15 second Burger King ad, which is unfortunately not enough time to explain all the fresh ingredients in the Whopper sandwich. But I got an idea. Okay, Google, what is the Whopper burger? And as we probably all know at that point, um, these speech activated devices went on to extend their 15 second spot to be another 30 seconds. And that was really getting into somebody's home and um, the, 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 the results of that were, you know, obviously it went beyond just media platforms. It became something talkable around the world. I never saw this campaign um, firsthand. I only saw it because it was shared. Um, and that, that is the goal. And you've only to look at those numbers there. 15 million organic online views in 48 hours. Uh, it was a global trending topic across YouTube and Facebook. Um, and it comes back to his point about, you know, just taking, taking risks as well. Um, he went on to talk us through uh, some of this work, which is fabulous as well. And it's still kind of live now. Uh, this work is um, where they just took actual uh, events of Burger Kings that went on fire and, um, and uh, celebrated the fact that that's what they do. They, they're proud of, of um, being flame grilled since 1954. Um, and I think it was, it, again, massive talkability, but people looked at it and went, wow, did they actually set that on fire? Is that real? Is that CGI? What, what, what's going on there? And it's, it's just, it shows an authenticity and it shows that they're really passionate about what, what, what they do. 
Um, this has come to light in um, this campaign about love in fire as well. So quite controversially, I suppose, around the world, they've got ultras, they've got fire dancers, they've got festivals, and they've got rioting, um, where it's just people that absolutely love fire um, and, and bringing that to life in a recruitment campaign, this was. And then right bang up to date, I suppose, I think earlier, it was earlier this year, they come out with an app that you downloaded on your phone and if you held that phone up to a rival's advert, it would set that advert on fire. You took that into Burger King and you got a free burger or a free Whopper. It's absolutely superb and it's just, I suppose what inspires me about this is that, you know, they're taking risks with the platforms that they're on. They're taking risks with the communications that they're saying yes, but it's the platforms that they're on and they're exploring everything, be it through Google Home, be it through um, apps where you, burn, you actually burn rivals' adverts. I mean, it, 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 it's not stuff you get to do every day, but it inspires you to keep challenging and keep, keep, keep trying to take a risk. Um, and they, these, they, this was sort of his, um, his go-to list for, um, for, for, for how, to have, how to have success. Uh, and the one I just want to pull out there is the biggest risk is not taking a risk. Um, he firmly believes in that. I know it doesn't always apply for every client, but he firmly believes in it. And at that level, that's how he's getting results. And, um, you know, a very inspiring guy, but a very inspiring campaign as well. That, that sort of, uh, you know, as I say, it was affirmation for me that this, this, we don't know where this is going next. And then finally, um, a campaign that I've had the privilege to contribute to um, with, um, in, in Ardmore is legal. And uh, we created a campaign um, for them that was born of an insight into the, the, how people in Northern Ireland regard Lidl, how they engage or don't engage. Um, it was all born of a truth. Uh, and so we'll just play this. I lose Lidl. I lose all their so smart customers saving so much money. I lose they're always banging on about helping local farmers. I lose all that community spirit. Yay! I loathe that all of a sudden everyone can afford to be a wine connoisseur and explore fancy new cuisine, Spanish, Greek. They even make people slice their own bread. These prices can't be right. Do you want a Lidl carrier bag? No, I'm a Lidl loather. I think Lidl, big on quality, Lidl on price. Yeah, as I say, um, Lidl in Northern Ireland, um, unlike the rest of Europe, to be fair, is quite a polarizing brand. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's one of their Marmite things. Um, and so what we wanted to do with, what we wanted to do with that is um, create a campaign that people could identify with, whether they did like it, love it or loathe it. And, um, you know, we had to be endearing and, 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 and what that did was that it gave us that, that moment on the sofa where you nudge each other and say, that's you, that is, or you know somebody that does that. So you may not be the individual. And um, when you break down the, um, the three markets themselves, the lovers, we don't really have a lot to do um, to, 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 to convert, we, with no conversion at all. What we, what we need them to do is to continue to shop, but also to share their experiences. The liker, there's obvious growth there, big market. The loather, you know what? They're probably not gonna come in. Um, but at least we can, um, you know, we, we, can, we can communicate with them and, and, and remind them um, what, what, what they're missing. Um, the key to the success of this campaign, uh, this film um, was one of three, uh, so we focused on each of the characters, but the key, to the, the key to the campaign was the performance of each character. We used uh, Michael Lennox, who is the director of um, Derry Girls, and he quickly observed that you know, casting for this was, was paramount to the success of it. But it shouldn't just be the end of it. We want everyone to um, identify this and we're going to start to explore where this goes beyond these three characters and embrace, you know, the, the whole of Northern Ireland. Um, you know, humour was, was, a, was a massive part of it as well because, you know, humour sticks in the mind. Um, but one of the most humorous things about it for me, and, and I suppose I'll come back to where we were talking about on, on the Absolute ad, is it's starting to get mimicked. And um, we're getting reports of kids impersonating the loather in the playground. And um, a colleague of ours whose wife is a teacher brought back, uh, showed him a homework 
and it was uh, a story about a Viking and, um, uh, and and in the end the Viking used the phrase that the loader uses in his ad so it's, it's just nice to see that it's being embraced by uh, embraced by Northern Ireland and, and I think we're you know we're some way down that path to um, identifying identifying with those uh, people identifying with each of these characters so yeah that was something that I'm proud to have contributed to and something that is you know currently serving us very very well it's still a young campaign but um we know we we, we know um we know we've got so much more life in it yet and it's uh, it's working a treat for us at the moment thank you paul thank you um, i have, have, have a few things i just want to uh, add in or ask you about or, or, or chat about but first of all um the, the one of the things is really exciting about the, the three that you shared was i never realized in that burger king um campaign that it was triggering the Google Home in the home. Oh yes, yeah. So when he yeah. asked that question, it's actually triggering the yeah. game. I never, I only, I only literally just yeah. Well, they started. That there. They, uh, they, they started to outlaw it as well, but Burger King kept finding ways around it as well. So Google tried to stop it and prevent it from happening, and it was just a lovely little battle. And every time it came up in the news, Burger King were getting a shout for being these yeah. brave communication people you know it's great yeah they're fantastic at the gorilla stuff and one of the other things they've done with um on the app side <clears throat> i believe is that um they at least for a period of time they ran a campaign where if you went to a mcdonald's drive through as you they had something in terms of the the in terms of a trigger as you entered the each mcdonald's drive through <laughs> and you got a you got a notification on your phone that said well, putting putting it nicely, don't shop here, don't don't eat here, <laughs> and you can go and get a Burger King burger for a cent, for one cent or something like that. So, um, yeah, they're really they're really Love kind it. of cutting Love the edge it. on and brave in terms of uh, what they try to do from a gorilla uh, gorilla point of view. Um, we're gonna we're gonna sort of soon conclude with those those two or three things that you think are really important for marketing managers and brand managers to look out for. Uh, when evaluating creative but, but first of all a couple of things that I just wanted to highlight um, from the things you've shown the first is the, the thing that I really like about the the absolute campaign and the the legal campaign is uh, first of all um, is the campaign ability so when I when I sort of trained as a brand manager um, you know back in back in two previous roles um, one of the first things that I was that I was taught or trained to do was to evaluate a creative on the basis of whether it's campaignable, it has that longevity, or what is it that's that's in there that gives it that gives it that. And often, um, the thing that does that, and, and something that was brought up in in F Week, uh, which is the Effectiveness uh, Festival in two thousand and eighteen, back in November October. Um, is that is that use of a consistent vehicle, whether that be a character yeah. or or a scenario or an object yep. or whatever? Yep. So an absolute fact is it's the it's the common bottle, thread. the shape yeah. of the bottle and maybe even the the absolute word in in the headline. And um, with Lidl, it's obviously uh, potentially. I know this is only just launched, but it's potentially the characters, or is the, or as a minimum the the characterization things, of yeah. the ca- characters. Yeah. Um, in in a campaign such as spec savers, it, it's the scenario around mistaking something because you didn't have your yep. your glasses on, and you didn't you didn't go to spec savers, and, and and we contributed to another campaign recently for MCS recruitment, which did something similar and used the scenario of of an imperfect situation and and kind of leveraging yeah. a bit of humor yeah. around maybe it's time for you to have it, to think about a move. So using that sort of vehicle or character and allows you to have that consistency and campaign ability to, to create the, the memorability and fame, which takes me on to the, the next thing that I just want to raise, and, and that is I recently uh, heard or watched a talk by um, a, a guy called Les Benet, who, who some people may know, some people don't, but he's a, he's a real leader in the market in terms of advertising effectiveness. And one of the things that he said in his presentation was that uh, as you go, as you go down what he calls the mental availability spectrum or continuum, um, as you go along that, the the potential effectiveness of your campaign dramatically increases. And he talks about these three stages: stage one being awareness, which 
you know, you're as a as a consumer, you're more likely to buy a brand that you're aware of or heard of than than one that you haven't. So that's at a very simple level. Um, that's that's very logical. So so if you achieve awareness, I guess you're on a on a on a fair to, to good uh, mm. ground. The second step is salience. That is where your brand comes to mind in in certain situations. So think. Um, imagine you're driving down the road, you get hungry, the brands that might come to mind, McDonald's, Burger King, KFC, and then potentially it's the one that actually appears on the road first that you that you go mm. in and buy from. Mm. So salience is that sort of top of mind uh, status that a brand can achieve, which which happens which happens probably with investment and over over the course of time. And I suppose there you're on you're on good ground for for talking about the horse racing analogy, you're on good ground there. But he said that the ultimate goal for, for all brands and all campaigns, and only a few ever reach this status, because by definition only a few can, is fame. Um, and it's a highly goal, but one worth, worth doing. And that's where a campaign becomes so famous that the consumer starts to talk about it. Culturally significant. Friend, exactly. Yeah. And, it, and becomes a real... Uh, a real campaign or that gets embedded into the culture yeah. or, or even starts to create a, an identity uh, uh, and people identify with it in and of themselves and I suppose that's the ultimate aim for us isn't exactly, it yeah. when, when we're creating these campaigns can we make a brand famous um, with a campaign um, and that is that is a mixture of 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 the creative aspect uh, and the and the and the media resource if you like the the, the budgetary resource to get exposure you're ab- you're absolutely right and, and you're about to ask me what are the three themes that i take from this that i think brand managers and, and marketers should should look for and i th- i'm confident that if you do the three of them right you'll make a brand famous great and just before we get on to that the last thing i want to do as as a as a former brand manager and account director um, is talk about the, the, the marketeer from Burger King. The second point in his mm-hmm. slide was create a great brief. Yeah. And it's so important. Um, so important that we'll probably do another masterclass on what we think um, makes a great brief or four or five things that make a great brief. But everything for me stems stems from that brief, which, which as a minimum for me should include the 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 belief that you're trying to shift um you know what is what is it you're trying to really uh get the consumer to do and, and another thing that i kind of heard recently which which kind of stuck with me was that advertising is more about conditioning more about it, 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 it's more related to conditioning of animals than it is to persuasive sales messages which is really interesting. Again, come back. Finish this story. Come, 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 come back to that brief. You know, if you can, if you can enable your agency to to get to a place and an insight where they're able to actually condition the audience mm-hmm. to be predisposed to buying, and then you hand over to that sales process eventually, whatever that might. Well, like go into the store, pick up the phone, make an appointment, whatever it might be. Um, but it's that conditioning um, thing that actually is the bit that probably switches you from salience to fame um, as well. Yeah, someone, someone better than me once said there should never be a brief without a briefing or a briefing without a brief. But the point is, um, without it, it's, it's nothing more than ill-informed guesswork. And we can't or, you know, authoritatively stand over um, at the belief of where this campaign is going to go unless we have that 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 um robust brief now i say robust insightful is probably better um because as fernando um, was was very keen on one line briefs is 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 gold but yeah that's that's i think that's uh, a little going 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 a little too far yeah oh, i want more than that yeah i want two <laughs> very good okay so um we've built you up enough let's uh, let's hear the tier three um things paul do you think so, um, you know, when, when, judging, when judging a creative or, or, or the agency that comes in your door and presents to you, the three things that I, I believe, I'm not saying they're exhaustive, but in my mind, I believe that make a great campaign. The first is to challenge. Um, and, and this is something that, that I, I sort of, 
I'll do every day. Um, you know, when I'm hiring suppliers, if, if I hire a photographer that, that just does what I, I've asked them to do, then I'm not that interested, or he or she, sorry, uh, then I'm, I'm not that interested. I want them to bring something to it. If I hire a director, I want, I want, I'm hiring them for, the, for their approach. I want to be challenged. I don't want them to do exactly as I've asked them to do. And I think the same goes for, for a creative brief as well. Um, and, you know, if, if, if all you want is what you've written down, why bring an agency into it? But it's more than that as well. And it's about, you know, we, took, we spoke there about fame and how, how can, you know, challenging a brief contribute to fame? It's got to challenge the viewer and it's got, it's got to be something that's memorable and, and, and will engage with them and, and they, will, they, will, they will look at and have an opinion of whether they like it or dislike it. But that is where they're going to, you, they're, they're going to start thinking about it more than just the one time that they read it. That's because it's going to stick in their head. The second part is that it is insight driven. And over the years, I have become more and more a slave to this because when I walk in and present an idea to somebody, if it's insight driven, I know there are no holes in the creative and I can wholeheartedly put my hand in the air and say, run this campaign and you will see positive results. If you don't have that confidence um, in, in it being insight driven, then as I say, you're starting to work on guesswork as well. The insight is, is, the, is, is absolutely everything and it will lead, lead you to gold and it will, lead you to, it will lead you to the fame that we spoke about earlier. And, but related is, um, is results focused, which is when the, the confidence that you have in the insights manifest themselves. Um, but it's also, it's, a, it's, a, it's about all those things that we spoke about earlier. It's about something that is campaignable. It is something that is going to continue to deliver. Um, and therefore, something that is just a one-off little shot in the dark, I'm sure they have their moments. But if you want fame, if you want your, if you want your campaign to succeed, then you've got to challenge them for it to be, uh, you've got to challenge your agency. That, is this results focused? What results can you see this, this is going to deliver? Um, so that, they're the three things, and I know results focused is something that Ardmore have been have been banging on about for an awful lot of years. Certainly, all the years that I've been here, but it still rings true. Can't back up. We just can't get away from it because it still rings true. It's what we're paid to do. You know, it's we're not doing this just for the fun of it. It's not art. You know, we're we're tr- we're, we're we're trying to achieve results here, and um, and therefore that's why it's 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 still number three for me. But I've got to underline it all with, um, you know, a theme that's ran through all this and, and, and Dave Trott said it, said it better than me and it was um, no risk, no reward. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, thanks, Paul. Anything else you haven't covered that you'd want to... No, no, share all good. Thank you very much. Listeners and viewers. Enjoyed it, enjoyed it. Good stuff. So, so everybody, I hope, you, I hope you got some value out of this uh, and enjoyed it today. I certainly... Had a lot of fun um, looking through some of these campaigns and and kind of digging into to what makes what makes something effective and and, and what is creative. Um, so please, if you got some value out of, out of it, share it with your with your colleagues. Um, and if you'd like to talk to us about your next campaign, drop me a little email at paul uh, at ardmore dot co dot uk. And we'd love to we'd love to grab a coffee with you and have a chat. So. Thanks all and until the next masterclass we we will uh, wish you all the best.